Hello, everybody. I'm Steph Morrison from the Canadian Schoolhouse, and I'm here with my good friend. <laughs> uh, and we are here to talk about homeschool community. And we're here to talk about that in a few different ways. First, we're going to talk about it a little bit, just maybe what you can do just yourself in your own community and why nurturing and creating this homeschool community is kind of important. And then mm -hmm. we're going to talk about what we do at schoolhouseteachers.com and how we do that for our members um, on that on that platform. I mean, not just on the platform, but um, how we uh, how we nurture that community and the events that we have going on and and uh, and Christine is is going to be the one that's going to answer most of that. Um, mm -hmm. I am a schoolhouse teachers member. I use that regularly in my homeschool. Um, so I actually know a lot about it too, but uh, Christine does work behind the scenes in all those events. So she's going to give us a little like behind the scenes look. We're going to get some like um, little special secrets that are happening back in the background. Right? <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, let's first talk about homeschool community, like co-ops groups and I'm going to admit that I have not been a big co-op person in my life a lot because I live, I've lived more remotely. Um, mm -hmm. But I have dabbled in that a little bit. So I remember once we did a co-op and it was actually quite a number of years ago, um, but we did a co-op and we just met every, I don't know, every other week, or maybe it was even just once a month because again, I was living in a rural area and people were kind of coming from all different areas. So I was a little bit more Southern Ontario. So we actually met in Arthur for those that know that, but that is like a small little town in uh, Southern Ontario. And at the time I lived in Fergus. So that was actually, or Alora actually I lived in, but um, so that was actually like a half an hour drive still to get there. But I really like that co-op opportunity. Um, I taught a class as a mom. And uh, so that was kind of fun to do teaching other kids and not just my own. And, and then my boys also got to just experience other teachers. And, and of course there was the, you know, hanging out with other moms and other kids part that was pretty cool. So co-ops are really, are really nice that way. It's a, li a little bit of help with the curriculum stuff, with the teaching stuff. And of course, a nice time just to get together with other homeschoolers. Um, so what mm -hmm. experience have you done any co-ops? I've done online only because again, I was in a town all by myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and couldn't find anybody like close by. I didn't, I was sort of the black sheep of my circle uh, <laughs> who decided to homeschool. So there wasn't an easy transition to say, oh, hey, I'm joining your group type of thing. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, following someone else. I was pretty much starting off on my own. So I found a lot of online groups to to start um which was which was helpful for me because i couldn't get around as easily and my kids were much younger so you know the whole diaper bag and all that stuff mm -hmm. is not something that i <laughs> i wanted to to do so um and honestly it was it was so encouraging to just to find that there are others out there um who who and i was i was shocked to find that there were others who were new to homeschooling as well and and didn't have that support system and so we kind of found each other um through various groups um i'm a member of of a few of them um and and so just to find you know just to be able to 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 say hey i'm looking for this for my child help me find it and mm -hmm. guaranteed somebody somebody out there has or at least knows where to point me, yeah. which direction to point me in. And then, um, so then, you, you know, you start feeling more confident because mm. one, you can, there's a safe place of people who understand homeschoolers. Um, so you can ask, you can be open and honest about um, your questions. And I've seen mm. moms just, I mean, they're worried about their child's learning styles or, you know, help my kids, their, their, their special needs, what do I do? Or, you know, just a basic question, like, how do I get started? Mm -hmm. Someone's always there to share their story. And homeschoolers love to share, which, I mean, yeah. but you don't feel, you know, scared, like, oh, I'm this new homeschooler. And, you know, people aren't going to help me. It guaranteed you find any homeschool group. I, I haven't found one yet that 
no one has answered, you know, hopped on to answer my question or be helpful in some mm -hmm. way. So, um, yeah, and then just to to share learning stories or curriculum suggestions, all of that stuff is um, encouraging. And just, you know, there's memes that go around in those groups that, you know, hey, homes you're a homeschooler if, you know, this happens or that happens, you're in your pajamas all day. And I know, like, those are so fun. <laughs> yeah, they're so fun and so- Relatable. You know, yeah, totally relatable. So I mm -hmm. I have really appreciated that. I'm currently looking for a in-person one now, now that the whole COVID thing is over. So uh -huh. we're, we're still looking for something like that. But I still am a part of, you know, if you're in a, happen to be in a, a rural, you know, or remote era, area, um, definitely check online because there's tons mm -hmm. of them, tons of us out there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. uh and just even on social media, um, you can find them. So don't be don't be afraid. We we don't bite at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there are, I mean, you really describe ones where it's just a, a lot more the social, like the support group, right? I shouldn't yes. even just yeah. say the social, but really the support group. And that's the part, like you can get that within co-ops, but they actually, they really do take a little bit more organizing, a little bit more prep work. And sure. when you've already got yeah. stuff, going on you know maybe you're just like got your cup full with homeschooling and being at home uh you know taking care of of your household and working possibly <laughs> like both christine and i do mm -hmm. um we work as well as do all that um so whatever your lifestyle is it might seem like it's too much to join a co-op and that's actually really where i've been for the last several years like i don't really want i don't really want even a uh I mean, maybe a monthly commitment would be okay, but I definitely do not want a weekly commitment or a bi-weekly commitment that adds more work. However, I do like the opportunity to to socialize, to to be with other moms and just hang out with other families. Um, and when I moved to central Ontario, so then I was actually even further away. And actually the only that was the only time I did get together with other groups. Um, there was a family or, or two, um, but one family, especially that we got together with regularly. And there was, oh, shoot, was it six kids or seven? I think there were seven kids. So anyway, it was almost like a, it was like a big group <laughs> getting together anyway, because they had so many kids. But it was just me and my two boys and then and then her and then my friend uh, Sylvie and then and then all her kids. So that was actually that really, I don't know, fulfilled the whole um, getting together and we chatted about all right. that different stuff. So, and then of course the kids just enjoyed, you know, going off and doing their own thing. So there's those two different kinds of kind of community that is really important to have. And that's actually not really just for homeschoolers. It's kind of for anything, right? I mean, there's all kinds of just mom groups out there and all kinds yeah. of your interests or whatever's uh, going on in your life. There's, there's that to be found. So we want to kind of focus on uh, encouraging you to just just find that community somewhere and maybe it is just online because that's fairly you still get a lot of um, you, you still get a lot of value from that but there's not as much time commitment and you can kind of come and go as you please but I really do encourage you if you can um, to find a local group that that you can connect with or even just a local family like just somebody else close to you that you can get together with like a month you know once a month once every couple of months whatever more often if that works into your into your schedule um and and just find that that community somewhere and yeah connect i actually really relate it to even like fellowshipping together like god put um you know we have that f word fellowship as as that that word of almost like getting together with with people you go to church with but it really is that fellowshipping within your within within families definitely a great way to talk about god and what god's doing in our lives and and all those all those different kind of things that we kind of connect fellowshipping with um but it it god gave us other people like all throughout his word he tells us how we should be t together you know it's kind of that that start of the church we need other people we need fellow believers in our spiritual life and we need yep. other uh we need fellow um, homeschooler, homeschooler believers, 
there we go <laughs> together um in in our lives as well so that we can just we have those other people to relate to and learn from and be encouraged and empowered by just all those things we've kind of already talked about so and if you if you are brave enough <laughs> And even if you're not, maybe it's up to you to start one. Yeah. And don't be afraid to try because I I kept looking for for a few years I wasn't able to really connect in a certain group where I was. And so I just started one because a lot of people were sending people my way on social media from some of the other mom groups that I had been like, Hey, I know Christine homeschools. Why don't you talk to her? And so I would have all these private messages coming my way. And I'm like, well, maybe we need a little homeschooling chat thing. So, and then <coughs> I'm sorry, when we, when I started it, you know, people join and then it was quiet for a while, but then, after a while, it just all of a sudden it blew up. And then people are asking all kinds of questions. They want to get going. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's May. People are thinking about, okay, the end of the school year is coming. I want to pull my kids out. How do I do this? What do I need? And and then even some some silly questions come up. And, mm -hmm. and so we're engaging. And so it's growing just like mm -hmm. that. So and I wouldn't have met these women you know, if I didn't try, if I didn't provide a place uh, for people to, um, because you never know, your group could be the one that they're looking for, the one that they feel comfortable, the one that they want to connect with. Um, so go ahead and hit that button, create a group mm -hmm. <laughs> and share it, share it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, you know, when you're talking about that, it made me think of, you know, what I hear and it's a little bit more on a business side of things, but it's not just business, right? It's about, about finding what God, um, put on your, on your heart to do. And we will find that those desires that we actually have on our heart, if we're following God and we're reading his word and we're, you know, we're connected with him, those things that we actually desire or that we just even think of as, oh, this would be a really good idea. Uh, those most of the time are are from God. That's the way God is talking to you, saying, yeah, you should try this. And more than likely, whatever it is, is going to be like putting you outside of your comfort, comfort zone. zone. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of yeah. think about this conference season and I have definitely been put outside of my conference zone or conference zone. Comfort too <laughs> put zone. in the conference zone <laughs> um and and i've done some presentations and like little workshops online <clears throat> you know done um both both christine and i have but i have done them live now in conventions and i've never done that before and that was quite a quite a step and a stretch but it's something i couldn't ignore because it wasn't just like um Oh, I think this is so great. And like, I do not like being, I do not like being in front of a lot of people <laughs> for sure. Um, but I do really like sharing about homeschooling. So anyway, although uh, I had all those signs and that desire put on my heart to really, to really share about different, different aspects of this great educational life we can live as, as homeschoolers. Uh, and, and that comes out. So that, that means, yeah, I'm going to go to conferences and I'm, I'm going to present, um, topics uh in in front of other people and and i get i get to do that right that's what i tell myself now it's like oh i get to do that um, <laughs> so think about that with your own groups right it may be outside of your comfort zone to to put that out there and you know so online is great um i think that's mostly what you were talking about christine yeah. but, but also yeah. like the local groups too <clears throat> yeah like feel well feel comfortable doing that as well. It can be just reaching out. Um, and this is actually something I need to do too. I live in a real rural area here in, uh, in Southwestern Saskatchewan. And um, it's a pretty long distance to, I'm not too far from Swift Current. So that's kind of a bigger city. Um, but it is like, it's like a, you know, a 40 minute drive or so to get there. So I'm not going to go there that regularly, but we will go there for a few things. And there's a few homeschoolers that I know, right? So I've got somebody I'm going to connect with um, soon on that. And and what I really feel God prompting me to do. Um, so if you're listening to this, feel free to message me at some point, say, hey, did you start that group yet? 
make me accountable. <laughs> um, but just to connect, actually not even start a group, but just to say, hey, like I've been homeschooling for 15 years. If there's anybody like thinking about it or you want to just get together and connect, like I'm I'm here uh, and I'd love it to be able to do that in my little area where I can drive like 15 or 20 minutes to connect with people rather than driving mm -hmm. like 40 minutes to swift current. Right. So yeah, I just, I'm, I'm going to wait to see where, where God leads me with that. But I know that's a little step I've got to do. And that's, that's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I haven't quite put myself out there yet. Um, maybe I will now that I've talked about it a little bit publicly here. <laughs> um, so let's go on to what we do in schoolhouse teachers. Cause we have no schoolhouse teachers has been around for a, a while. I say a while, 20 years. No, we did. We did. Years. That was the magazine. So that we've been great. around for over 10 years. I, hmm. I believe this is the 11th year, but if anyone's listening, you can correct me, but for sure we have passed 10 years. Um, and yeah, so if you haven't heard about schoolhouseteachers.com, we are a curriculum site. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, you, uh, I got to talk to many uh, parents this weekend at our OCHEC convention here in Ontario, and many were shocked to find out that Schoolhouse Teachers is one price for the entire family because other curriculum sites you pay either per child or per course, mm -hmm. depending on uh, the company, of course, but we are proud to offer one price per family. And so whether you have one child or six children, you pay the one price and we've got courses uh, from pre-K to 12. So we've got you covered no matter where your child is mm -hmm. in their learning. And I mean, we've got school boxes if you want the planning done for you. Um, but even so, those are just suggested. You can you can swap whatever you like on there and custom build your uh, curriculum based on your child's learning needs. and your time and it's awesome. <laughs> Although I'm a little biased, but yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> I love the electives. I always, I, uh, you yeah. know, when we talk about schoolhouse teachers, I always put in there just with my, just as the homeschooling mom that uses schoolhouse teachers, I, I really love all the electives. So all the different stuff that we can get on graphic design, on photography, on, uh computers I'm, yeah computers uh oh Business. there's just yeah. so much i'm thinking what i've i've actually started doing lists so you know within schoolhouse teachers you can bookmark everything and i have kind of stuff i i have a bookmark area for for both of my sons and then just a general one and i actually really have so much in there that i bookmarked because every time i get a schoolhouse teachers you know just that update that comes every couple of weeks um I, uh, there's always seems to be a course on there. It's like, oh, that one looks really good. I'm going to do that one. So I, you know, I go to the site and then I, I bookmark it. And then recently I've just kind of been doing the little, you know, chorus and learning assessment kind of, kind of thing. So I'm like, oh, there are so many courses here. So I had to get a little bit more organized. So now I actually have a, a little bit, I've, I've, um, I've used a few pages and just printed them off from the smart mama planner. Um, and, and that is coming out soon, our new one, although I used the one last year, which you get free as a schoolhouse teacher's member. Um, but I, I thought I'm going to start writing these down and I have to uh, do uh, write down when we're actually going to cover them. And those ones weren't more electives. I think I've got like geology and, and astronomy coming up. We just started Latin and uh, OM music theory. So we just started, started those Very two. Cool. And then, and then we do most of our core subjects, but those are just the stuff that we, that we do together, the three of us, me and my, my two boys. So, um, that is just one of the great things about schoolhouse teachers is the, the electives that are there and actually so much more outside of, um, outside of just the courses, as far as resources that you can just find as an individual on the site. But then what we've really done the last two maybe three years ago we maybe first started i think it was like story time that started first and now we have we have a story time and bright spot well i'm gonna let you actually christine you tell us you tell us about the regular happening events that's that we do it at schoolhouse teachers yeah so um since we're talking about community we also provide that for you um 
so you're not only, you know, getting access to some wonderful courses and curriculum on the site, um, additional resources, we do have communities. So in your member dashboard, if, if you're not a member, these this is what you'll find. You'll find details for these regular events uh, that happen. Uh, members Lounge ha happens uh, every other month from September to May. And actually, we just had our May one on Tuesday. And then today we actually had our story time and show and tell. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this is it, it's so fun. The kids come and they're so excited about the show and tell part and they love the stories. And we read stories from our World Book Library, which, again, you have access to eight World Book Libraries as part of your membership. So for fun, we get to read some of the early learners uh, books, ebooks on there. And we have themes for, for every month. And uh, we also provide an additional PDF of extra learning. So if your child was interested in that topic, we've got a list of courses and lessons and fun activities that we've gathered um, that's all available on schoolhouseteachers.com. Uh, and then we have our Bright Spot Chats. And I think for me, this one is my favorite because it's it's our mama's group. Mm -hmm. And this is where we just come together and we just talk about homeschooling life. Um, sometimes they're fun and happy topics and sometimes they're the really tough and challenging topics. And we just have a great time just sharing with one another and then we pray for one another. And it's, it's so good. And you really set feel that sense of community. So these are the three uh, regular events. And then we've got some special events that happen throughout the year. So <clears throat> we, we do our art and photography fair, um, our science fair, our talent showcase, and our senior recognition. That one is happening right now. And the cool thing about this, and this is the community part, right? So when you think, uh, you know, because you're not going to public school, you miss out on these kinds of kinds of events that would happen in a public school. Guess what? We've got them, too. Mm -hmm. And we encourage people to do these things in their homeschooling community as well. You know, if you're not going to participate here, do it in your homeschool community. But we do have it here and we get a great response, especially for the art and photography fair. We've got some really, mm -hmm. really great entries every year. Um, and that seems to be the most popular. And then the talent showcase, so many wonderful talents. Like, uh, honestly, you would think it's just your regular run of the mill type of talent. But every year we get these mm -hmm. unique, odd talents that just blow your mind. And it's like, wow, these kids are so talented. And again, the science fair, same thing, so talented. And then the, the senior recognition, hey, at the end of the year, you've got a graduating student. Mm -hmm. We're here to celebrate with you. So you, basically you send us a picture and we shout it out for you. And we just get the whole community behind you and you know, giving you a, an applause for getting through um, surviving <laughs> the whole, the whole journey and thriving. <laughs> and thriving. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's it in a nutshell, but honestly, mm -hmm. these, these, uh, are all geared to, you know, bringing us together as a community yeah. and to let you know that, you know, we, we want to see you succeed in your homeschool life. Um, and we're here alongside for the, for the ride. So, mm -hmm. So give us a little sneak peek behind the scenes because you actually do do most of this this planning or at least you're part of the planning crew um, for these <laughs> events. So yeah. um, how does that happen? I mean, do, so I don't know if you were there at the very first event or when those started getting. Created, yeah, these were how? pretty much running when I got here. Yeah. But um Basically, yeah, we are already, we've already planned out the next year. So it's well in advance. Um, and it takes a lot of prayer and discussion on the topics and the themes that we want to, um, to present to you. Um, we do rely a lot on, on what our members, you know, write in from customer service, or maybe they've shared in our Facebook group. 
um, just general homeschooling questions, or maybe there are questions related specifically to schoolhouse teachers. We take all of that into consideration and we tailor that so that we are answering your questions and we are meeting your needs um, depending on what you're looking for. So we just want you to know that you're being heard and you're being prayed for. We pray for, we pray at every one of these events, even, even the kitties, they, <laughs> Mm -hmm. They'll bow their heads and we'll pray over each other and for all the families. Um, so prayer is a big, big part of uh, a part of this. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so, yeah, and we meet throughout the year and our team, we discuss it. We make sure um, we're covering everything. Uh, we make sure you're up to date on Anything else that's happening, we, we give you announcements, any sales, any in, uh, exclusive tips and, and, and all of that stuff. Plus, for our members lounge this year, it, it's not available anywhere else, but we have been giving away a special I Love Schoolhouse Teachers t-shirt, and I'm really jealous that I don't have one. Oh. So, <laughs> but those those kinds of things, we have special special things just for our members. So um, there's benefits to, to um, being, being a member and being part of our community. And that's the idea behind it. We just wanna make sure that, you know, our members feel uh, valued and uh, appreciated because we do appreciate you. Uh, yeah, and so we we cover all different ranges, like I said, of topics. Um, it could be how to teach. I know we did Let's Talk Science, how to teach science, and we had uh, our very our resident uh, scientist <laughs> come and give us so many helpful tips and resources on teaching science. And so we've, we've got a couple of those. We talk about personal stories. Uh, we just talked about... Um, just going through those hard times, um, you know, and homeschooling through the rough times, you know, when, when someone passes away in the family, how do you keep going? How did, you know, and so we take in all of that and uh, yeah, we talk about pretty much everything. Yeah. I like, I haven't actually been out to a few, <laughs> to events lately, but uh but I do remember I did, I, I was at a few bright spots and, and it's kind of neat the way, and, and you shared some of it too, which is going to, uh, I really want to get out to a few of those. And I like those cause that's quite, sort of like the little support group you get and getting that face to face. So sharing about a topic. So I, I guess I, what I like about that is the layout of it. We, sh there, there's a topic that the bright spot is on. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's like a, you know, a bit of a presentation, I guess, on that, but, but then most of it is talking about that. And I, you know, I think sometimes yeah. the conversation can go to maybe what's on people's minds that are there, but um, at least that topic sort of starts the conversation, the conversation on, yeah. on what that could be. So it, it really mimics as well as it can be in an online environment. It really mimics that in-person support group kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd put, as you were talking there, I'm like, oh, like we have this listing of support groups. Um, so on Schoolhouse Connect, actually lots of great stuff on there, but I've shared the link to our um, support group. So you can actually click on the calendar. There's one for the art, the calendar, a map, <laughs> click on the maps <laughs> that are on there, uh, wherever your province is. And there's one for the U.S. Uh, and uh, be able to find support groups in your area. More importantly, though, we don't have a lot of support groups on there. We're not, I don't think we have one for every province yet. Um, so some of the, I actually, we probably do. We have all the major <laughs> provincial groups on there. Um, but we uh, we want to have smaller groups on there as well. So if you happen to have a support group that you would be open to um, ha sure. having on the site yeah. and having be people be able to contact you, right? If they're in that area, they can contact you for a local group. We would really love to hear from you and and get a listing on there of your group so it can be you know a, a little bit more local base to you know whatever your your city or your area your town whatever mm -hmm. that is so we'd love to be able to have some uh some more groups populated on there and some more contacts of people that can be reached out so that we can say hey you can go here and when if you're in 
um, Saskatchewan, you can find, you know, across the province, we're going to have, you know, we're pretty spread out here in Saskatchewan, nothing like Ontario. And I used to live in Ontario. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably, if I talk about provinces, I'll talk about those two the most. Um, but to have a support group that, that can actually cover most of the province or at least close enough, close enough that, that you can be relatable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we need each other. We need each other. God says so. That's what his word told me. me we need each other. So, um, yeah, just nurture that community wherever wherever you are. Actually, churches are really great. I was so fortunate to have a church. Um, so I drive into Swift Current, but that's okay. <laughs> I can drive once in a while. Um, so I drive into Swift Current, but within that, um, they have a homeschooling group there and not one that I go to. So it's more like a um, it kind of started with COVID and, and they had just had a few parents get together and it's not a, um, you get your kids schooled. It's actually kind of neat how they have it set up because, uh, the parents still do the curriculum, but the kids go there and do their curriculum, do their, their lessons and their courses. So it's, it's still a real parent directed, uh, learning um for for kids but it makes it a little bit definitely a nice transition into full home education if, if you want to do it more from your home but these this little group in this church is great i actually haven't been out to it um but i've been invited to just come out and like visit for a day right it's not going to be my mm -hmm. i'm going to go there because i have it four days or no is it just three days out of the week i think it's tuesday th uh tuesday wednesday thursday they have mm -hmm. that there but from whatever it is 10 yeah. to 3 i think it is uh wow. show up there and yeah it's just open so actually i kind of would like to i like to see what they're doing more there and just be able to promote that and really churches are just such an excellent excellent um place i guess i guess because it's an it's a it's an act of god as well right a church a church building it was created for the purpose of of you know, uh, praising, worshiping, glorifying God and, and his believers getting together. But I really find homeschooling to be that way. It's really a, a call of God to strengthen families and really just strengthen um, kids. You can just do it so much more through home education, parent directed home education and um, and churches are a great place. So you, you might even consider like maybe you could start something at your church if you're going That's to right. Or find That's churches right. in your area to just be that support uh, right in the community for homeschooling as well. So, a few a few more ideas to add to that nurturing and creating community. Ah, I see your comment from Diana there. So, support groups are so diverse. The Lord brings amazing combinations together. He does. So true. He? Yeah, it's like I'm so always cute. amazed. I could go, I could actually probably talk for the next hour just on what he's done in my life. And then for another few hours from what I've heard stories from other people as well. It's um it's really an act of God to bring us together. So uh in in so many different ways. Actually, really an act of God, I think of the old schoolhouse. And it was really we are so Christ-centered. We pray at every meeting. We are very are, are very this is God's company, right? I mean, we're a for-profit company. We're not a we're not a ministry, but it's uh, we are trying to do the work of God in the homeschooling community in everything right. that we do. And you know, we we really we really try to work on God's design. And I and I hope we do that in every area. But yeah, um, yeah. And if you haven't uh, gone to a convention, you've got a convention coming. That is another oh, place yes, to find. Really highlight that. <laughs> find you yeah. find you might find your next best homeschooling buddy at, at, a, at a local convention. So if I encourage you, I I met so many people and I gave them my email address um, because we really connected and they wanted to know more and just and not more about homeschooling, but just how you know just to get to know me more. Um, because mm -hmm. they they heard my homeschooling story and and you've got a story to share and that could be the story that somebody needs to encourage them along their way. So uh, yeah, get out to your convention if you can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Convention season's almost over. I mean, the big season, but anyway, it's always continuing. 
already planning for next year for some of these uh, conventions across Canada. So I know, right? Awesome to hear. <laughs> All right. Anything else we want to add here, Christine? No, that was it. All right. Well, thank you all for watching, whether you're watching us live or watching the recording, feel free to comment in the, uh, with this video here, we come back and check this regularly. Um, we want to also, uh, share anything else with you. If we, if something else comes to mind, especially about sharing community, we'll pop some comments in ourselves. And, uh, we do these live streams bi-weekly. So every other week we are on here with some kind of topic and what, are we doing we should mention that what are we doing in two weeks in two weeks we're going to be talking with barbary oh yes right. uh, about homeschooling with heart mm -hmm. and that is our blog with the old school house so we're just going to be talking all things encouraging um the homeschooler um and how you can homeschool with heart mm -hmm. And that reminds me, I will be heading to the AHIA conference, the Alberta conference uh, that is going to be happening that weekend. So that is just just a little little over two weeks away. If you're in the Alberta area, check that out. The Alberta, you could probably just put Alberta Homeschool Conference. It'll pop up for you somewhere. Um, but that's coming up May 25th. So 25th and 26th. Uh, all right. Well, you all have a great night or day if you're watching the recording. <laughs> and we'll see you again. Bye.